You're looking for a place to get away from it all. You love golf, but you also like to mountain hike. You have a passion for the ocean, but you could really go for a cozy cabin in the hills. You wouldn't mind a quaint bed and breakfast, some salmon fishing, but you know, you could really go for a little luxury, some five-star indulgence, cosmopolitan style. I've got just the spot. I'm Lou Hanessi, and this is Victoria. Welcome to British Columbia's Vancouver Island. British Columbia is Canada's most westerly province. It's a huge tract of land into which could easily fit all of Germany, France, Austria, and Switzerland. Victoria, located on the southern tip of Vancouver Island, is the capital of BC. This is where our travels begin. The European history of British Columbia is similar to the rest of the Western Hemisphere. Explorers arrived and found indigenous people. In British Columbia, most tribes lived along the lush coast. By the late 1700s, two British explorers, Captain Cook and Captain Vancouver, had visited these parts, and permanent settlements soon followed. British Columbia is an unsurpassed combination of untamed wilderness and pleasant, attractive cities. Victoria was founded in 1840 as the new western headquarters of the British trading concern, the Hudson's Bay Company. And although Victoria could be mistaken for a small seaside town in Britain, other cultures, such as the Chinese, have contributed to the mosaic and richness of its history. It's a good idea to start your visit here in Victoria, but sooner or later you'll end up in the vast forests and on the waterways of this spectacular province. Join us today as we witness yet another leap of madness in the bungee zone. Walk through a replica of a Middle Ages marketplace. Cast your line with a salmon dew bite. Ride a steam engine and marvel at Butterfly World, a rare collection. But first, we start with a long-standing British tradition. Afternoon tea at the Empress. Reminds me of a quote by Kipling. He said, to realize Victoria, you must take all that the eye admires in Bournemouth, Torquay, the Isle of Wight, the Happy Valley at Hong Kong, the Dunes, Sorrento, and Camps Bay. Add reminiscences of the Thousand Islands and arrange the whole around the Bay of Naples with some Himalayas for the background. And you thought Victoria was just the capital of British Columbia. Tea at the Empress has been a tradition since 1908, when the hotel first opened its doors. Don't rush this experience. Savor the homemade raisin scones with strawberry jam and Jersey cream. The recent $45 million renovation makes it possible for you to admire your surroundings, as they must have been at the turn of the century. Victoria is a small city and should be experienced on foot. Virtually all of the tourist attractions are within walking distance of the inner harbor. The commercial harbor is located past the downtown area. This section is for private boats, ferries, and tours along the waterways. Ferries from Victoria to the United States take about an hour and a half. If you need tourist information, you'll find it in this Art Deco tower on the north side of the harbor. When your feet have had enough, hail this water taxi and avoid the usual traffic. BC's magnificent parliament buildings, a 12 and a half acre block close to Victoria's inner harbor. This has been the home of colonial and provincial government since 1859. And since the buildings were first constructed in 1897, the facade has been outlined by 3,300 small light bulbs, making this a rather illuminating historical landmark after the sun goes down. When the Legislative Assembly is in session, you can observe its proceedings from the public galleries. Guided tours of the public areas are provided free of charge year-round. The original brick buildings of Market Square were here over a hundred years ago, and during the 1880s, the square had quite a different character. 
The area was frequented by sailors, Indians, miners, and Chinese immigrants, and the square was a collection of hotels and saloons, foundries, manufacturers, and opium houses. Today, the large courtyard has changed slightly. It's surrounded on four sides by three levels of unusual shops, boutiques, and ethnic restaurants, not to mention a fascinating bookstore that may have been here during the last century. In the downtown area, historical landmarks are easy to find. Fort Victoria, the original site of what eventually became the city center, is outlined on the sidewalk by bricks that run along the perimeter of the old fort. The year was 1843. Only 42 years later, you could have eaten what some consider the best chocolates in the world. Still in business and noted for their Victoria creams, Rogers chocolates are handmade daily. These chocolates are mailed around the world, including Buckingham Palace. How would you like to experience the history of British Columbia in an afternoon? With its impressive walkthrough exhibits from pre-Ice Age to present day and more than a million artifacts, the Royal British Columbia Museum warns, once you enter, you may forget the outside world. This is a place where contemplation comes easily. The realism of the exhibits is astounding, and even more so when you consider that the artists had to create a reality which doesn't exist anymore. What you are looking at represents decades of research and hard work, decades of experimentation and innovation. This collection of the Royal BC Museum opened its doors to the public in 1968. The exhibits trace every facet of the economic, cultural and social endeavors of the inhabitants of British Columbia. There are landscapes with animals that seem in suspended animation, shops and entire streets from the last century, mining and logging operations, a fish processing factory, a glimpse of the Victorian era, part of an early ship and many more floors and exhibits that you can discover for yourself. The lives of the first peoples of the province are seen through their art and their survival skills. And a walk through the big house is a walk into the heart of a rich civilization. Outside, adjacent to the museum, is Thunderbird Park. It was created in 1940. The totem poles you see here are not the originals. By 1952, it was felt that they would not last in the open air. And so skilled Indian carvers were brought in and replicas made. The original totem poles are undercover, where it is hoped they will endure for generations to come. This is the gate of harmonious interests, the entrance to Canada's oldest Chinatown. Beside the shops and Chinese restaurants, there are a number of excellent art galleries here. To get to Chinatown, walk north along Government Street from the Inner Harbor. It's about a 10-minute stroll. And don't miss Fantan Alley. It's a narrow passageway that will take you into the heart of Chinatown. Coming up next, nature's beauties, a stroll beside 800-year-old trees, and a leap that's becoming more and more popular. Vancouver Island is located at the southwest corner of British Columbia. The east coast of the island is the route we took as we traveled north. With the island's mild winters and Mediterranean summers, you can play golf year-round and enjoy some great mountain experiences. Vancouver Island welcomes more than three million visitors every year. Among those visitors, 20,000 happen to be gray whales. They stop off the coast of Vancouver Island on their way to the Gulf of Alaska every spring to feed. What's the attraction? Glad you asked. The scenery. For some of your trip, take to the water. This rare collection must be seen. Fresh salmon is yours, if you have the patience and skills. I'll try my hand at it in Campbell River. 
Start the drive north to Duncan, the city of totems. It's about 45 minutes from Victoria. If native history sparks your interest, don't miss Duncan's Native Heritage Center. At the entrance, the sign invites you to come inside and see our pride. It's a pride of the legends of coastal tribes throughout the Fraser Valley and southeastern Vancouver Island. Here you'll see native arts and crafts, jewelry, sweaters, totem poles, and on-location carvings. In the carving shed, you can watch as totem poles and war canoes are created from huge cedars. Located on the banks of the Kawichan River, the Native Heritage Center is more than a museum or tourist attraction. It's an opportunity to step into the past and experience elements of native culture that came close to being lost forever. In the Kawitsan Arts and Crafts Gallery, authentic and original artwork is on display and on sale. There's also a large library of books about native culture and heritage. The center also has a big house, audiovisual presentations, and a large restaurant. Eventually, many of the totem poles carved here end up in parks, museums, and art galleries worldwide. You don't need young kids to show up here. At the Duncan Forest Museum on the outskirts of town, you can journey into the past on three-foot narrow gauge rail. Enjoy a picnic on the 100-acre site that features buildings and equipment used in logging at the turn of the century. Originally, this was a private collection, but as interest grew, funds were raised to create a proper museum. The Duncan Forest Museum is open daily from late April to late September. About 20 minutes north of Duncan lies the fascinating town of Shimanus. At first, this town seems just like any other. The downtown is quaint and received the New York Downtown Revitalization Award. That's quite an award. But you soon find out that's not why you're in town. It's called the little town that did, did prosper that is. About a decade ago, when the town faced economic uncertainty, a revitalization project turned the streets of Shimanus into an open gallery of murals. The town's forest heritage that dates back to 1858 lives in full color on the walls of some local buildings. Sort of a giant picture book of the story of Shimanus. Walk the streets and keep count. There are 26 murals woven into the townscape. The first five were painted in 1982, and since then, artists from around the globe have flocked to Shimanus to be part of Canada's largest permanent outdoor art gallery. This town of about 4,000 residents sees about 400,000 visitors every year. Is this the right place for a bungee jumping? This is the bungee zone. Bungee jumping is an all-weather sport, and no special clothing or skills are required. Just guts. During the summer months, 200 people take the leap most Saturdays. Now, how about a view from the front? The 140-foot bridge is located outside Nanaimo. Coming up next, Billy Goat Gruff is alive and well and living in Coombs, B.C. Thank you for a lovely dinner. Aren't you going to ask me in? For coffee? Well, I do have taste as choice. Then how can I refuse? Savor the sophisticated taste of taster's choice. Well... Just one more cup? You know I love your coffee. Then... By all means, take it with you. <laughs> we believe satisfaction goes beyond the best bumper-to-bumper -bumper protection in Canada, or the best coverage on major components, or even free roadside assistance around the clock. It goes as far as the Nissan Satisfaction Commitment, the most comprehensive full-line customer care program ever and standard on every 1992 Nissan. Because we believe warranty should protect the people who drive the cars, not the people who make them. Nissan, built for the human race. 
Golden Griddle introduces our new $4.99 pick a meal, get a great deal value menu. Fettuccine Alfredo served with our famous Caesar salad and toasted garlic bread, just $4.99. A family tradition for nearly 30 years. You'll get great meals, service, and value. We guarantee it. It is better to be truthful and good than to not. Do you really think it's possible? Tonight at 9 on City TV. This is what I want. I run this operation. Scooby. The story of two con men who believe that good life is better when it's taken from someone else. Who is that? Miss Janet Colgate, United States Soap Queen. Yes, Freddy, you're ready. Yes. Perfect. Welcome to hell. Don't make me go back there. Michael Caine and Steve Martin are Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. The city premiere 9 tonight. You're going around the bend. Oh, I do hope so. I've always wanted to travel. If I told Joe I was going to Greece for a week, he'd think I was gone for the sex. I've got this little dream. I make your dream come true. Tom Cotty and Paulina Collins star in Shirley Valentine, a city premiere 8 Wednesday. Nanaimo is the hub of most of the commercial activity on Vancouver Island and is directly across the Strait of Georgia from Vancouver. Vancouver Island's second largest city is the harbor city, Nanaimo. Today, Nanaimo offers one of the most beautiful waterfronts in all of Canada. But originally, Nanaimo was the site of five Indian villages called Snanimo, meaning great and mighty people. This bastion is one of the last remaining structures of its kind in the West. It was erected in 1853 by the Hudson's Bay Company as protection from Indian raids. This is the place to leave from if you have plans to head north to fish. The harbor is a busy place for seaplanes and commercial fishing vessels. But every year, this location is also the scene of a ritual that anyone can join. It's the Nanaimo bathtub race across the Strait to Vancouver. Floating devices that are supposed to resemble bathtubs in size and shape have a motor attached and a willing occupant inside. It's amazing what some people will do on a summer day, year after year. Continuing north, Parksville is about a three-hour drive from Victoria. It's an easy day trip if you've made Nanaimo your base. As you drive through the small town of Parksville, it's clear this is a family resort area. But as the name implies, this is mainly a region of parks. Located both on the water and inland are provincial parks, RV and campground parks. If that's roughing it, there are dozens of motels, beach resorts, and cottages to rent. Plan your travels early. This is a very popular summer destination on the island. The trees in Cathedral Grove are mostly three to four hundred years old. Except for these. The Douglas firs. They're eight hundred years old. Doesn't even look like wood. Cathedral Grove is filled with fauna, from wild mint and forget-me-nots to great western red cedars. As you walk through the forest, don't forget to stop and look up every now and then. Except for the redwoods, these are the second tallest trees in North America. Cathedral Grove is located in Macmillan Provincial Park. In 1944, the land was donated to the people of British Columbia, 337 acres of virgin forest. The grove has trails with short and long loops to follow. Pick up a free pamphlet. It's a self-guiding introduction to the natural history of the park. The guide explains and points out what the untrained eye would miss on a stroll through the forest. Stop when you arrive at Coombs. Yes, the rumors are true. This is where the storybook character known as Billy Goat Gruff lives. But there are no trolls to worry about. This goat is safe on the roof. Things are just as interesting inside. The eclectic variety at the market ranges from fruit and vegetables to Chinese vases and knickknacks. There's also a delightful small restaurant inside. The thing we didn't find was goat cheese.
Butterfly World is just down the road from the market. This was a pleasant surprise. A rather small area has been converted into a perfect habitat for butterflies that can't be found in the wilds of North America. The collection of butterflies flitter around as you walk along a circular pathway. Bring a camera and lots of color film. You have never seen nature so generous with her colors. The enclosure is heated and humid, so don't be surprised if a butterfly lands on your bare arm and stays a while. These large butterflies are attracted to human perspiration. On the way out, comply with the sign and check yourself for a butterfly trying to adopt you. Butterfly World is open from mid-April to mid-October, seven days a week. Coming up next, one of the self-proclaimed fishing capitals of the world, Campbell River. The last stop on today's travels is a small town about midway up the east coast of Vancouver Island. Campbell River, as anyone will tell you, is synonymous with the word salmon. With five different types of salmon, Campbell River is thought by many to be the salmon fishing capital of the world. It is home to Canada's first saltwater pier. Discovery Pier was opened in 1987. It's a 600-foot pier that provides a day and night fishing facility for all throughout the year. If the town seems too quiet, it's probably because many folks have gone fishing. There's enough room on the pier for everyone. What you don't own, you can rent at the concession on the pier. Hourly, half-day, and daily terms are available. Oh, that's a nice one, Rolly. Although the pier is open to the public year-round, the concession runs only from May 1st to the end of September. I let this out, and I cast it out that way. Alternatives to this kind of fishing include package deals at fishing lodges in the Campbell River area and flights to special campsites in the wilderness to augment your angling desires. You can have your favorite fish custom smoke just the way you like it in Campbell River. And this is where some of the salmon on your supermarket shelf comes from. The British traveler will feel right at home here eating fish and chips. When it comes to fish, Campbell River covers every angle. A fishing lodge should be your first choice in Campbell River. Painter's Lodge is situated just outside town. It offers excellent accommodations and a special fishing center that arranges for guides, boats, planes, equipment, and clothing. If you make Nanaimo your base, the Long Lake Inn offers a tranquil setting on a small lake off the main highway. All rooms have a fridge, coffee maker, and television. The inn is also only minutes from local golf courses. Vancouver Island is accessible by air and the elaborate BC Ferry System. There are at least 32 sailings a day, up to 64 in summer, from the mainland to various ports on Vancouver Island. Traveling the waterways on the BC Ferry System is the best way to see the exciting, rugged wilderness of Vancouver Island. You know, I think the gray whales are onto something. When they stop off the coast of Vancouver Island every spring, they say it's to feed. But I know better. They come for the parks, the fishing, the beautiful scenery, the R&R, &R, the friendly folks. No wonder the gray whales come back every year, wouldn't you? For Travel Travel, I'm Lou Hanessian saying goodbye from British Columbia's Vancouver Island. Scottish Distorto Dynamo's Teenage Fan Club. Rip it up on the new music tonight at 5, right after the Electric Circus with guest syndicate 305, next on City. on this travel travel destination right to CFCF 12 405 Ogilvy Avenue Montreal Quebec H3N 1M4 
Travel, travel flew to British Columbia courtesy of Canadian Airlines International. Our world revolves around you. Travel, travel stayed at the Coast of Victoria Harborside Hotel. This new and spacious hotel with rooms overlooking the inner harbor is only a short walk from downtown. Lou Hennessian's wardrobe provided exclusively by Liz Claiborne.